The first plane had hit, and I watched in silence. I closed my eyes and I prayed to Allah, please Allah, make it be mistake, make it be accident. The second plane hit, it is not accident. My family so worried because my brother Karim, he live in New York. Nobody know where he is. Finally, the phone rang. I hope it was Karim, but no, it is my children's school. They tell me there is bomb threat. They tell me there is mob. I don't know this word in English, shoe mob. When I arrive at the school, I understand the meaning of the word mob. There were crowds of men and women. They had no mercy in their eyes. They were swearing and screaming, USA, USA, go back to your country, you terrorists. It was so ugly. I grabbed my children and I put them in the car. I was about to drive home when I noticed my friend, Im Asad. She is trying to enter the mosque when this young man, he hit her. It was in that moment that I hear Mama's voice. You are Layla. And for the first time in my life, I felt that power. That power that Mama always tell me I have. I get out of the car, lock the door, children, and I walk towards the boy. I can hear my friends screaming, Layla, don't go near them. Layla, what are you doing? But I did not stop walking. I grabbed that boy. His eyes, they look like wild animal. Is this solution? Is this helping people in New York? No, don't call me terrorist, I am not. Listen to me, I know you are angry. I am angry too. My brother, he live in New York and I don't know if he is alive or dead. Don't spit at me. Listen to me. This is not Islam. Murder is haram. It is forbidden. It is in Quran. We create you different nations and tribes so that you know each other. Get to know me. Get to know my community. We are good people. We want peace. Islam, it means peace. Get to know me. My name is Layla. Get to know me, get to know me. Remove the veil from your heart. You see, I wear veil on my head, but my heart, my heart is not covered. Remove the veil from your heart and you will realize we are one people. I pray to Allah for that boy. I pray to Allah to make his heart unveiled. Thank you. My name is Rohina Malik, and I'm a Chicago-based playwright and solo performance artist. And that was an excerpt from my one-woman play, Unveiled. I discovered theater and playwriting in high school, and I loved the art of telling a story. There is a verse in the Quran that says, noon, by the pen and what they write. And growing up, the elders from my community would explain the verse by saying, God is taking an oath. God is swearing by the pen. And they would say, never underestimate the power of the pen. So as a storyteller, I knew that I had to do something. Because every time I turned on the TV, I would either see violent extremists being the voice of my faith, or I would see TV shows and movies where whenever there was any sort of Muslim representation, it wasn't a character, it was a caricature. It was the same old terrorist villain plotting, and the women in their veils were weak and oppressed and needed to be saved, or they were plotting with the men. What I never saw was normal people, normal citizens just trying to live their life. And when a community is never depicted as normal, it's a form of dehumanization that can ultimately lead to a hate crime. After 9-11,
there were so many hate crimes, not just towards Muslims. Arab Christians were killed, Sikhs, Hindus. It impacted everyone. And that's when I realized I needed to do something. So I picked up the pen and I wrote my one woman play, Unveiled. And the moment I did that simple act of picking up the pen, the world opened up to me. And amazing people came into my life. People like Ann Filmer at the 16th Street Theater in Chicago. Her mission is to tell everyone's story. And when she saw me perform Unveiled, she said, that's a story we never see. So she produced my show. And once I had picked up the pen, I couldn't put it down. I wrote my second play, Yasmina's Necklace, and then I wrote my third play, The Mechatels. And my plays were being produced all over the country. My one-woman show, Unveiled, was being invited to universities and synagogues and mosques and churches all over the country. And I realized that I wasn't just challenging stereotypes. I was smashing them. And I realized the power of art. We have to protect the arts. I have, I've been touring my show all over the country. I've been in big cities, I've been in small towns. And in both big cities and small towns, I'm seeing a lot of theaters close. And they're closing because people are not showing up. They're not buying tickets. They're not donating. And when we don't support the arts, there's a lot at stake. Some people say education is the answer, and that's true, it is, but it's not enough. We should never forget that during the Holocaust, those showers or gas chambers were built by very educated men and women. Education has its place, but it's just not enough. We need the arts. Because the arts can, they can speak to your intellect, but they can also speak to your heart. They can touch your heart. And that's what good storytelling can do. It can move you. So we have to protect the arts, especially in these times where hate speech is on the rise. And whenever hate speech is on the rise, you will see a rise in hate crime. So show up, support the arts, and never forget the power of the pen. Thank you.